Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing RDTOH, which stands for Refundable Dividend Taxes on Hand. RDTOH, or Refundable Dividend Taxes on Hand, accounts are used to track refundable taxes paid during the year. Once upon a tax time, we've covered this in lecture, but it's worth covering again. Prior to 2019, each private corporation had a single RDTOH account, and we could draw a T account as follows. All refundable taxes were added to this account. This includes Part 1 refundable tax and Part 4 refundable tax. Refunds were ultimately subtracted from this account, and the ending balance would be the maximum potential refund for a CCPC in a given year. If we move on to current tax times, things are quite different. RDTOH is now tracked in two separate account balances. We have Eligible Refundable Dividend Tax on Hand, or ERDTOH, which has an opening balance. And then we have Part 4 Taxes Paid on Eligible Portfolio Dividends. Remember, portfolio dividends were defined for you in a lecture. And we have Part 4 taxes paid on eligible dividends from connected corporations to the extent that such dividends included a refund from the paying corporation's eligible RDTOH. Again, we would deduct refunds claimed in the prior tax year, and we would have an ending balance, or your ending ERDTOH, at the end of the day. The other RDTOH account is called the Non-Eligible Refundable Dividend Tax on Hand account, or the NERD TOH, or any RDTOH, and once again we have an opening balance. To this we add the Part 1 refundable tax for the year, and any Part 4 taxes paid on non-eligible dividends from connected corporations to the extent that such dividends included a refund from the paying corporation's non-eligible RDTOH account, and in some rare instances, Part 4 taxes paid on non-eligible dividends from non-connected taxable Canadian corporations, but that would be rare and is out of scope for our course. Again, we would deduct refunds claimed for the prior year, and we would have our ending balance in the non-eligible RDTOH account. Let's talk a bit more about the dividend refund. CCPCs can now have both RDTOH account balances. An eligible dividend can trigger a refund from the eligible RDTOH account. And a non-eligible dividend triggers a refund from the non-eligible RDTOH account, and possibly eligible RDTOH. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine that we have a balance in an eligible RDTOH account. It'll be represented by this yellow box. We can also have for the same CCPC a non-eligible RDTOH balance, and that'll be represented by a green box. Both of these account balances belong to the same Canadian-controlled private corporation. And like any CCPC, this CCPC has shareholders. If this Canadian-controlled private corporation chooses to pay a dividend to those shareholders, if it is an eligible dividend, that can trigger a refund from the eligible RDTOH account balance, ultimately reducing the amount in the account. If the size of the dividend is large enough, we could actually deplete the eligible RDTOH balance entirely. Let's reset and consider a non-eligible dividend, which will trigger a refund from the non-eligible RDTOH account and, as you would expect, would reduce the amount there, or the balance therein. Unlike an eligible dividend, a non-eligible dividend, if it is sufficient enough in size, can deplete the balance in the non-eligible RDTOH account, and actually start to reduce the balance in the eligible RDTOH account. Let's apply some of what we learned from lecture and our readings and what I just went over now with some case facts where we're going to ask you to calculate a dividend refund.
Zedco, a CCPC, has taxable income of $495,000, which includes $25,000 of incidental interest income and $60,000 in interest from long-term bonds, with the remainder being active income. Zedco had no foreign income during the year. Let's start to visualize this as we go through the different facts in the case. So here we'll draw Zedco. They have taxable income, incidental interest income, and long-term interest income. During the year, Zedco received a few amounts. 30,000 in portfolio dividends that were classified as eligible. So we can draw that and I'll use a yellow line to indicate eligible dividends and I'll use a broken or a dashed line to indicate that they are not connected. This is a portfolio dividend. They received 12,000 in eligible dividends from ACO. So let's introduce ACO on our picture. And there's the 12,000 eligible dividend. It's eligible, so I'll use a yellow line. And it's a solid yellow line to indicate that ACO and ZCO are connected. 15,000 in non-eligible dividends from BCO. So let's put BCO on the diagram and I'll use a green solid line to indicate that it is a non-eligible dividend going from BCO to ZCO. This is a good time for us to note that ACO and BCO are wholly owned subsidiaries of ZCO. So they certainly hit the 10% threshold and they are connected corporations. Moving on, we can talk about the income of ACO. The income of ACO is 30,000, and note that all income in ACO is portfolio eligible dividend income, and they did receive a refund. But we aren't told how much that refund is, and that's going to prove to be a little more work for us when we go to solve this problem later. BCO has income of 70,000, and they receive a refund of $4,500 on the dividends paid. That's actually going to simplify things knowing the exact amount of the refund. And again, you'll see that when we go to work through the solution a little later. Zedco's part one taxes payable was higher than its incidental interest income and the entire annual business limit was reserved for the benefit of Zedco. That's going to help us when we start to figure out what Zedco's part one refundable taxes are. Finally, the required. If Zedco pays an eligible dividend of 100,000 and a non-eligible dividend of 100,000, what will the refund be? Note the opening balance of all RDTOH accounts are zero for all companies, and none of the companies paid a dividend in the prior year. Well, let's continue to add to our diagram. What we are talking about now is if Zedco has shareholders, which undoubtedly they do, what is the refund gonna be when Zedco pays a $100,000 eligible dividend to those shareholders and a $100,000 non-eligible dividend to those same shareholders. Let's start to work this out by focusing in on Zedco to start. Now the eligible dividend refund, hopefully you recall from lecture and readings that this is gonna be the lesser of two amounts. The first amount currently as of this recording is 38 and a third percent of the amount of the dividend. Remember the eligible dividend was 100,000. Do the math, you get $38,333, you know, and I've rounded to the nearest dollar here. The second amount, when we're taking the lesser of these two amounts, is the eligible RDTOH balance, which we weren't given. So we have to solve for that, which we can. Let's start doing that and we'll try to do it visually. So let's draw out Zedco's eligible RDTOH account. I'll put a question mark at the bottom because we don't know what that number is right now. But we do know from the case facts what the opening balance is. You'll recall that the opening balance, and I've highlighted it here in blue, is zero for all companies' RDTOH accounts. So I'll indicate zero with a dash. We also know that during the year, Zedco received 30,000 in portfolio dividends that were classified as eligible. The math on this would be 
30,000 times 38 and a third percent is equal to 11,500 for the part four taxes on those portfolio dividends. The next thing that we need to include in Zedco's eligible RDTOH account is we have to have some consideration for ACO. In other words, what is ACO's dividend refund? Zedco needs to include a portion of that, but we weren't given ACO's dividend refund, so we have to solve for that. ACO's dividend refund. Let's take a look at ACO's eligible RDTOH account. We'll draw it out. We know that the opening balance is zero for all of the RDTOH accounts for all companies in this case. We also know that the income of ACO is $30,000 and that is portfolio eligible dividend income and that they received a refund. So we could take 30,000 multiplied by 38 and a third and we have $11,500. This is the part four tax on the portfolio dividends for ACO. We know that ACO does not own any subsidiaries and that means that ACO does not have to claim a percentage of a refund for an ACO subsidiary or better said a connected company to ACO. So that would be zero and ACO's eligible RDTOH balance is now $11,500. Remember that number. We go to calculate the eligible dividend refund inside of ACO. That's going to be the lesser of those same two amounts, 38 and a third percent of the dividends paid. Remember, ACO paid a dividend of 12,000 out. So 38 and a third percent of 12,000 is $4,600. And we compare that to the amount that we just calculated. The eligible RDTOH balance for ACO was $11,500. Hopefully you can see that when we compare those two numbers, the smaller of the two numbers or the lesser of is $4,600. That $4,600 is going to be ACO's refund. Zedco is supposed to claim their percentage of that refund. And since ACO is wholly owned, 100% of ACO's refund is what will go into this account. And there's the $4,600 there. If we start to add up the amounts in Zedco's eligible RDTOH account, we get the opening balance of zero, plus 11,500, plus $4,600. The total is $16,100. That number we can then plug in to the calculation we were trying to solve for at the very beginning. The eligible dividend refund for Zedco is the lesser of 38 and a third percent of the eligible dividend, 100,000 paid, compared to their eligible RDTOH balance. In this case, that balance is $16,100. I think we can see pretty clearly the lesser of those two amounts is $16,100. And that will be the eligible dividend refund for Zedco. But we aren't done because Zedco also paid out a non-eligible dividend of $100,000. And when we calculate the non-eligible dividend refund, we have to do another lesser of calculation. It's going to be the lesser of a few amounts. We'll take 38 and a third percent of the non-eligible dividend, which was also 100,000. So once again, we are looking at $38,333 rounded, except this time we are comparing it to the non-eligible RDTOH balance, which again, we weren't given that number. So we have to solve for it. Let's visualize this by drawing out the account. I'll put a question mark at the bottom to indicate we don't have that number. Remember, the opening balance of all of the RDTOH accounts for these companies is zero, and I'll indicate that with a dash. We now will add to the non-eligible RDTOH account the refundable part one tax. And refundable part one tax wasn't given to us. We've got to figure that out too. I'll highlight for us some of the relevant numbers in the fact pattern as we go through it. Maybe a great place to start would be to consider the small business deduction amount for Zedco. 
meaning the amount of income that is sheltered by the small business deduction for Zedco. We could work that out. Recall the small business deduction amount is going to be the lesser of three items. The first is Canadian active business income. For us, it's the 495000 of total taxable income, and from that we'll subtract the $60,000 in interest from the long-term bonds. That gives us 435000 of active business income because the incidental interest income of 25000 is considered incidental and still active. Two, we usually take our taxable income and we can, if we had active foreign business income, we would subtract four times the foreign tax credit. But in our case, we don't have any foreign income, so there's no foreign tax credit to speak of. The second item where we're comparing the lesser of three amounts is just going to be 495000 The third item is the annual business limit, and as of this recording, it's still $500,000. The least of these three amounts is 435000 Remember that. We're going to use it in a second. Now, when we go to calculate the refundable Part 1 tax, what do we do? Well, we look at the lesser of 30 and two-thirds percent of 60000 which is your aggregate investment income, or in our case, the long-term interest from the bond. We look at 30 and two thirds percent times our taxable income, subtract the amount of that taxable income that was sheltered by the small business deduction. And then we compare it to the part one taxes payable. And we weren't told what part one taxes payables was in this question, but we do know that part one taxes payable is greater than the incidental interest income. That's just the way the question was worded. If you can see that there highlighted in blue right to the right of the screen, it says part one taxes payable was higher than its incidental interest income. The least of these three amounts is $18,400. We can take that number and plug it into our non-eligible RDTOH account. Still a little more left to do here. Remember that BCO receives a refund, and unlike ACO, the narrative tells us that the refund was $4,500. Pretty useful. We can just take that number and plug it straight in. Because Zedco wholly owns BCO, the percentage to take is 100. We'll take 100% of BCO's refund. 100% times 4,500 is $4,500. We now have an ending balance for the non-eligible RDTOH of $22,900. And we can plug that into the original non-eligible dividend refund calculation we were doing. It's the lesser of two amounts, 38 and a third percent of 100,000. And we compare that to the non-eligible RDTOH balance of 22,900. You can see that the smallest of those two amounts is 22900 but there's something we need to do for non-eligible dividend refunds, or that's best practice to do. We can see here that the difference between the 38 and a third times the dividend paid is compared to the non-eligible RDTOH balance, there's an actual excess amount there or a difference. That difference is calculated to be $15,433. If there is an excess, then we should do the following. We should take our non-eligible RDTOH balance of 22900 and we should add the lesser of comparing two amounts. The excess of 15433 and we'll compare that to the eligible RDTOH balance, subtract the eligible dividend refund. If you recall, the eligible RDTOH balance was $16,100. And as you can see at the very top of the screen, the eligible dividend refund is $16,100. So $16,100 subtract $16,100 is equal to zero, which means we're going to add the lesser of these two amounts, which is zero. So the actual final thing will not change. 
we get $22,900, which will become the non-eligible dividend refund. Add them up and we get the total refund to be $39,000. There was a lot to this question, so I hope the visualizations helped. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and happy studying.